Hi, I'm Marianne Redpath and I'm Head of Berlinale Generation. And today it's my very great pleasure here in the Berlinale Meets studio to talk about the film, the wonderful documentary, it's called Alice, uh, set in Colombia and made by two fantastic directors who are going to talk about it today. Their names are Nicholas van Hemmelrich and Claire Weiskopf. Um, so let's just jump over to them and see what, they, what they've got to say about the film. Hi, you guys. Welcome. Welcome to the studio. And Hi, yeah, Lydia. thanks Thank for letting you. us screen your film, first of all. It's a wonderful film and we're going to screen it in 14 plus. And we're going to enjoy having the premiere with you guys um, all going well very soon here in Berlin. So it's, got, it's all really exciting. It will be the, I believe, the world premiere of the film. So that's, that's really a big deal for us. And uh, we are happy to have you. So yeah, thanks once again. Um, I'm going to start our little talk rolling with a quote that I read in some press material that you sent um, recently. And it's more about the philosophy of the film or something maybe behind the film than about the film itself. And then we'll go into the film. The problem is not the way we are relating to the planet, but the way we have been relating to our children. Um, it rings a lot of bells for me in terms of the work that I've done for many years at Generation. So what are your thoughts on um, this, uh, this quote and, and how does it relate to your work? The, this quote actually comes, I, I did a certificate in holistic science very recently and mm -hmm. the quote is by the head of studies of the, of the certificate in Schumacher College in the UK. And what we've really liked about this film is that everything that we do in our lives uh, since we're doing the film somehow connects to what we're doing in the film and it helps us un really understand deeply uh, the things that we're doing. When he said this, actually he just said it in an interview in a, in a class where we were discussing other things and we really understood that they've been trying to convince us that the problem is the way we are relating to the planet, but nobody really uh, takes care of how we're relating to our kids and how we have been relating to our kids and teaching our kids for generations. And that's the root of maybe everything that's happening today. And to the planet uh, as well. So yeah. We like this quote, like to put the film like in another level. It's yeah. also connected with what's happening in Colombia right now with the peace agreements. We talk a lot about big things, but no one seems to talk about childhood. Mm. And if we look all the people that have been in war for decades, most of them had a traumatic childhood. So mm. probably we would have taken care as a society of their childhood uh, on time. We wouldn't need to deal now with... Uh, with their problems and with people that have been in war for decades. So mm. we want to open that reflection, not only in, Colom in Colombia, but in the world, that that's really the only way to, to change things in the future. Okay, so let's jump to the film from that wonderful beginning. Thank you very much. Um, I'm agreeing with you on all levels, so I think we're going to have a good <laughs> conversation. Um, I'd like to... Um, Start um, or start with a clip, actually, um, a clip which which we will then talk about, giving the setting and the and the, the the girls who are who they are. So let's have the first clip first, and then we can talk about it. So um, here we have uh, some images uh, from your film, a scene from your film. Um, I would like you to start to explain what the place is, what the setting is, and who are, who are these girls? Where do they come from? 
Okay, these are girls um, that live in a, a state-run boarding school for teenage girls who previously have been living on the streets of Bogota mm -hmm. or that have really complicated families, so they have uh, them in this institution. Um, it's an institution, and they live there until they are 18 years old. They sleep there, they eat there, they're like a big family. Um, the institution takes care of their like uh, psychological, uh, also like um, issues, uh, and they're like a big family. Really, that is where the film is is uh, filmed. And they they study in this place. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I just wanted, can I just add that we arrived there because we were invited to um to create a workshop a documentary workshop with them not in this exact place because there's lots of different places in bogota uh, and we started um uh, this workshop at the beginning it was really weird because when they said oh you have to go and give this workshop to girls that have been abandoned and this and that you always have this idea of oh poor girls so oh, i feel i felt really sorry for them, Nicole, so we have two little girls, so you imagine like, and when we got there, well, it was really incredible because they're so tough and strong and unbelievable, like uh, powerful. So they changed completely and it was like a, a little bit of a chalk because we had prepared like this uh, type of workshop and they challenged me and Nico all the time. So it was really amazing to change that idea we had of all oh, these poor girls because they're not poor at all they have so much um, capability you know and so much cre creativity and so we were really over overwhelmed and that's how we began the relationship and we always knew we wanted to make a film but we didn't know how to make it so how and long we did it take that... sorry yeah go ahead Please. No, we understood that we had a prejudice. Uh, the mm -hmm. problem was in us and not in them. Uh, and that was also the guide for how to make the film. Mm -hmm. It's to try to transmit our experience then to the audience, that you have this prejudice and then it's challenged and then you start seeing things in a different mm -hmm. way. Yes, so uh, like uh, several uh, documentary filmmakers who I've talked to this, this uh, season, um, I've come to realize um, the kind of films we like to select um, are echoing what you're saying. You, you build up a trust and a respect uh, between yourselves and your subjects who are in the end the resource that you are uh, using to make your films. So this film doesn't turn into anything decent if you don't have that, uh, that kind of uh, beginning point. The trust, how long did it take you to... We'll talk about Alice in a minute, but I'd just like to uh, hear a little bit about the, the time, the time frame. Did you work with them for a long time before you started filming? Were you filming all along? Um, how was that process? Well, the, the first time we went to the, uh, the institution to give the first workshop was 2016. Uh -huh. And w there we found the seed, like we felt there's something here and we were really, we really got engaged with the girls and we wanted to go back. So we looked for ways to get support to make more workshops. Mm -hmm. So we kept doing workshops. We got the, a green light from the institution uh, to give them workshops. And then we decided we wanted to make a film and we, it really took a, a lot of time to develop. We tried different approaches to make the film, uh, but in a game we played with them uh, as part of the workshop where, where we asked them to create a fictional story. Uh, we understood that their imagination was very powerful and we were astonished by the stories they could uh, create that even though were very full of fantasy or happened in very far away places, they always ended up reflecting their own universe, their traumas, their dreams. Uh, and we understood that imagination can say more about ourselves and our biographies. 
Uh, it can access truths that mm -hmm. would otherwise remain hidden, and it also helps us protect them. Mm -hmm. Because in this film, you will never know what's true and what's not, what happened to them, what's imagined, what's happened maybe to a relative, to a friend. And it was important for us to uh, protect the girls because we don't know what's going to be of them in the future. So it was uh, years developing the film. The shooting actually was only two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, some, it's a very different way of approaching a documentary than what we have all did in the past. So it was a big challenge, but also very exciting to make something completely different. And I just wanted to add that um, they were not prepared. Like these girls, only a, a, a few, like three of these girls, we knew from uh, previous workshops. Um, when they come into the room, everything is spontaneous. Mm. So they uh, create this story from zero. We don't create create this story with them uh, before. It's spontaneous. Yes, it, you really feel it, actually. And you don't feel like... I mean, there's a kind of a staging that happens in the framing, of course. That happens with every film. What you choose to show, what you choose to cut, with what music or what sound. But uh, I wanted to come to to Alice, to the figure of Alice, because uh, it's, uh, she's, she, Alice, is a very important uh, figure, or they, uh, throughout the film. And um, it, can you explain, please, um, for someone who has not seen the film, who is Alice and what does she have to do with the approach that you used to get the girls to open up? Well. Alice is, um, we created a fictional character called Alice. This fictional character is um, a, a classmate of the girls um, in the film. Uh, the, it's a choral film. There's 20 girls that are, are speaking about Alice. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, they create this imaginary friend called Alice. And through this friend, uh, they tell stories. They tell stories of hope, they tell stories of sad stories, and they create this character. And the character are all of them. <laughs> in the end, Alice is all of them. So they speak, the, the they speak in the third person, don't they? They, they talk mm -hmm. about her, and sometimes they speak in the first person because the, the stories they are creating are so close to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It creeps the up on you, this realization. Sorry. Sorry, it creeps up on you while watching the film. This realization that they are talking about a fictional person outside of themselves, which is actually them themselves, and it's very, very interesting how you've managed to relay that for the audiences to to discover that is what is happening. So, congratulations on that, Thank Nicholas. You. No, you were going to say the something. The only limit we give about Alice, the only frame, mm -hmm. is that it's. A uh, 15 year old classmate called Alice. Apart from that, each girl is completely free to create, create their, their own Alice. Their own Alice, yes. Super moving. And um, so we're just going to show the next clip um, to show, to give uh, the audience an idea of um, the setting, how you set up these uh, interview situations with the girls talking about Alice. Pues, quiero decirle una cosa. Yo no me las creo. Que, que yo estoy aquí interna. ¿Por qué? No sé, no me las creo. O sea, pienso que todo esto es un sueño lo que me ha pasado. Sí. So here we've seen one of you, did you say 20, 20 girls who are participating? It's a very interesting, they're all incredibly moving and interesting uh, young, uh, young women. And um, she is going through a phase where she's a little bit skeptical, I think, about the game or the, or the, the way in which things are going along. Is that, is that your understanding of what, uh, I don't believe I'm in this home, I don't believe um, it's like a dream? Or is that more of a like in denial of, of reality statement 
or both? We think it's more in denial of reality. I think she had a really tough um, childhood and she, she, does, she can't discern what's reality and what's fiction at that moment. Like she's, she can't, and she can't believe she's like in a protected place. Mm -hmm. That's uh, our conclusion. Like she is very protected at this time in this institution and she came from a really tough uh, background. So it's a moment that she says, well, I, I can't believe that I'm, I, can, I, I can be safe. Okay, okay. Yes, it's, it's a film which you feel as much we as anything. So you, I have, uh, when I watch it, I have these reactions coming and going. And um, so my interpretation wasn't so far from the truth, I think. Um, <laughs> These girls, uh, they began, you began working with them and you introduced, they, you introduced together with them the figure of Alice, which is um, with a shut eyes and imagining what she looks like and uh, how she arrived and um, other things which she, this Alice would share with them uh, in, 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 um, in trust and uh, which the girls then share with the camera and with you. Claire, um, the woman's voice. I mean, I think uh, I think uh, it's it's a film a lot about uh, what happens to to young women and to girls and to children in a society that can be very tough and uh, quite violent, and they all have very violent. Uh, backgrounds and upbringings and end up living on the streets. How important was it, uh, because your voice is heard in the film, how important was it that you were the one asking the questions and not Nicholas? Mm, well, I think they could relate better with me, uh, being a woman. Um, uh, so I guess that, like, initially was uh, uh, like I always made the interviews I was like um, relate relating with them um, in a much closer way uh, but also I just wanted to to tell you that we all had like all the crew we were a very small crew uh, it was Nicolas that was beside me the whole time uh, Elkin the the photographer and um, the Patrick. Patrick the sound and the producer that was in the back uh, that wasn't like on the setting and we all had like a psychological preparation for the shooting um, because we knew we were gonna deal with girls that had had traumas that had been traumatized mm -hmm. and for us it was very important to know what happens if this comes uh, gets out of control or mm -hmm. if a girl enters a place we don't want to um, uh, let her go to that place. So we had this uh, 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 psychological pre preparation that was very important to know yeah. like certain quotes, uh, to let them know also that they were in a safe place. If they wanted to stop, they could stop. So they had that uh, in mind. So it, that was very important also. And not so only me as the interviewer, but all the crew. Um, so, so it was a very intimate, intimate setting, yeah. and that was crucial for them to feel like they are in control of the situation. And uh, did you have the feeling for the girls um, uh, that um, this uh, process, where you create a safe place for them to, to, to have a contact with their thoughts and feelings and emotions and things they have experienced in life and to give expression to them. Was that, um, for most of them, a feeling of um, being free, able to express yes. that? Yeah. So, totally, totally. Like, uh, 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 they start very, it's like the film, you, well, when you see the film, yeah. uh, it, they've, at the beginning they don't trust uh, the game, they start doubting and then um, slowly they get into this character Alice and it, to the moment that they lose Alice and they become um, to, to realize their, their own lives, uh, a lot of them, or the lives uh, nearby. And um, at the end, they always 
thank me or thank the crew. They were like, because I always ask at the end of the shooting, like, how do you feel? No, uh, was it okay? And they always said, yeah, I realized lots of things that I didn't realize before. So it was wow. a really beautiful process. Yeah. We did another thing that it was with a therapist, like a theater ther therapist. We had three workshops while shooting. So in the beginning, we had a workshop of preparation, like just um, a very di dynamic and playful prep preparation. And then in the second workshop was after we talked about Alice, so they could share that mm. character in between us, between them, sorry. And so they could liberate things that maybe were uncomfortable or they could work on that character because we wanted them to, to not just be in that encounter. We don't call it interview, we call it encounter because lots of things happen there. Um, and not just to go out of that encounter and, and forget Alice, but also to process it. Mm. So we had these three, three like workshops that they could work um, in community of what, what they had lived on the set. Okay, what an amazing experience for them and also for you, you uh, being so close to it all the time. Um, I really have a lot of respect for that. Um, I, I guess something that uh, as the film goes on and they become more and more open, but also go more and more deep about their backgrounds and about their where they've come from and things which have happened to them, uh, violent things or things which have brought them to living on the streets. Um, it's not nice to hear. There's a lot of emotions come through. It's, hello, we've got a visitor. That's nice. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, I just wanted to, to, to point out, um, I think uh, there's a lot of hope at the end um, in this yeah. idea of uh, fantasy or, and imagining the future which you also is one of your, your um, questions which you ask. And I'd like to just bring in the, the last clip yeah, yeah. To, um, to, to let the audience know one of the responses of uh, what, how, wh where do you see yourself in the future? Or where does Alice see herself in the future? Ella quisiera alguna vez llegar a ser como Presidenta de Colombia. A veces uno dice que o bueno, lo que yo a ella le entiendo es que uno mismo se baja la moral. Digamos, uno en el concepto que vive y todo, y uno estando acá también y todo lo que tuvo que vivir, para que uno llegue allá tan alto es muy difícil. Entonces eso también, eso baja un poco la moral. Pero sí, ella como que ese es su sueño y pues como que eso es lo que va a perseguir ella. Yes, how amazing. Um... Maybe she will make it. We hope so. I'll end with a quote from uh, Pablo Picasso, which also another filmmaker told me this time last year, everything you can imagine is real. Pablo Picasso, he says that. And I think that's something you have given um, your subjects in your film, the power of the imagination to, to help them hope and see another future. So... Yeah, our time has come to an end. I'm sorry, I really would love to speak. Maybe we will have a, ni a nice chat that's not on stage uh, just to find out more because there are so many questions. It's a fantastic film. Um, you have achieved, I think, everything and more um, that, 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 that you wanted to achieve with the film. And I think it's really going to be so interesting to see how audiences react to it. So I wish you all the best for that journey. All the best to the girls. Um, I guess you had a screening roundabout now for them of the film. Is we, that are, right? we are leaving uh, tomorrow to show the film and we are so excited because it's like the first time they're going to watch wow. the film. So That's very, very special. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Best regards uh, from, uh, from the Bellinale to them. Uh, yeah, we hope to see them on the screen uh, in the future as well and also more of your work. So thanks a lot. Thank you, and we're so honored to be in La Berlinale, and this section is incredible for us. It's like our dream come true, so thank you very much for selecting us, and we're very excited to be able to share it with the audience. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you, too.